Wiring a PLC might seem complicated, but it's actually easier than you think. In this video, I'll break it down into simple steps. How to power it up, connect inputs, and wire outputs like solenoids and contactors. Stick around, and let's make PLC wiring easy. Before wiring a PLC, let's quickly understand fundamentals. Check the PLC power requirements. PLCs typically operate on 24 DC volt or 230 AC volt, depending on the model. Always refer to the manual to confirm the correct power source before wiring. A PLC has digital and analog inputs that connect to the input module and digital and analog outputs that connect to the output module. Choosing the right module is key. This is where we connect devices like push buttons, sensors, and switches. When an external device is activated, it completes a circuit between the input terminal and common terminal of PLC. Depending on the PLC model, inputs can be relay type, transistor type, or analog. The output module controls devices like motors, relays, solenoids, and indicator lights. PLC outputs can be relay type, transistor type, or a mix of both for digital outputs, plus analog outputs. Different PLCs have different I.O. configurations, so always check the specifications to choose the right one for your task. Terms like live neutral, common, normally open, and normally closed are essential to understand when making PLC connections. Another one crucial factor is whether the PLC uses syncing or sourcing logic for inputs. This affects how devices are wired and must be considered to avoid incorrect connections. We will take close look at these terms in upcoming chapters. Now, let's see how to properly power up a PLC. For this demonstration, I'll be using a Shinji PLC as an example. As we discussed earlier, the first step is to identify the PLC power requirements. Some PLCs operate directly on 230 AC voltage or 120 AC voltage, while others operate on 24 DC voltage. Let's see wiring configuration. First you have to identify the power input terminals. If the PLC operates on AC voltage, you'll see live and neutral terminals on the power input section. In the Shinji PLC, the live wire connects to the L terminal, and the neutral wire connects to the N terminal. Once the power is properly supplied, the PLC will indicate its status by turning on the power indicator light. In the output module section, you'll notice additional power terminals labeled 24 DC volt and 0 DC volt. These terminals supply power to the output circuits enabling the PLC to switch connected devices like solenoids and relays. Without this power, the output module won't function properly. Now that your PLC is powered up, let's move on to the next step, connecting inputs and outputs. Let's break down how to wire an input to your PLC correctly. Again, you have few consideration before wiring an input. First, identify the input terminals on your PLC. Different PLCs use different labeling conventions. Some PLCs label inputs with letter X notation. For example, X0, X1, and X2. Others use I notation, like I0, I1, and I2. Then you need to identify whether your input device sends a digital signal or an analog signal. Based on this, you must connect the device to either a digital input terminal or an analog input terminal. Always refer to your PLC's user manual to understand the terminal layout. If your sensor or switch sends a digital signal, you need to check whether your PLC module is syncing or sourcing. This determines the direction of current flow between the PLC and the connected device. In a syncing input, the current flows from a positive power source, passes through the sensor, and then goes into the PLC input, which is connected to the ground. The sourcing input PLC provides positive voltage to the sensor, and current flows through the device to ground. Why this is important? When an input signal is sent, it completes the circuit with the PLC's power supply, typically 24 volts DC. If wired incorrectly, the PLC may show an error or fail to detect the input. 
This is the basic idea of syncing and sourcing, but I'll create a dedicated video to explain it in more detail. In this section, we will see how to properly connect an inductive proximity sensor with a four-wire pinout to a PLC. First, we need to determine the type of signal our sensor sends. This sensor provides a digital signal. Next, we check input is relay type or transistor type. In this case, it's a relay type input. Since it's a relay type input, we must choose the appropriate digital input terminal on the PLC. Now, let's determine if our PLC module is syncing or sourcing. Suppose our PLC module is syncing meaning current flows from the input device to the PLC. In this case, we need to use the NPN signal wire from the sensor to match the syncing PLC input. For this configuration, we need a 24 volt DC power supply. Here's the wiring setup. Brown wire is connected to 24 volt positive terminal. Blue wire is connected to 0 volts DC. Black wire or else output wire is connected to PLC digital input, X1. The PLC common terminal is connected to 0 volts DC. Since the black wire carries an NPN signal, it matches our syncing PLC input. Here is how the system works. When the sensor detects an object, it outputs 24 positive DC voltage to the PLC input. Since our syncing PLC input expects a positive voltage signal, it correctly identifies the presence of an object. When wiring digital inputs, always check whether they are relay type or transistor type and select the correct input terminal accordingly. Let's see how to set up an output. We'll be wiring two different types of outputs, a 24 DC volt solenoid valve and a 230 AC volt contactor to help you understand the wiring process. Before we start the wiring, let's first take a look at the PLC output module and identify its terminals. In Shinji PLCs, output terminals are labeled with the Y series, for example, Y0, Y1, and Y2. In some other PLC brands, you may see outputs labeled with the Q series, like Q1, Q2, and so on. Now, you may notice multiple common terminals on the output module. Why is that? What is their purpose? Typically, PLC output modules divide outputs into groups, with each group having its own common terminal. This allows you to use different power supplies for different output groups. For example, one set of outputs may operate at 24 DC volt, while another set may use 230 AC volt. Before connecting an output device, we must consider a few key factors. Output type. Whether it is digital or analog. If digital, is it a relay output or transistor output? Since our solenoid valve is a relay type output and operates at 24 DC volt, we must connect it to a relay type PLC output. Here's how we wire it. We need a 24 DC volt power supply for this setup. The positive wire from the power supply is connected to the COM2 terminal of the output group. The positive terminal of the solenoid valve is connected to the Y2 output terminal of the PLC. The negative terminal of the solenoid valve is connected to the 0 volts terminal of the power supply. Here is how the relay output works. In a PLC, digital outputs function as electronic switches or relay switches. When the program activates Y2, it completes the circuit between the power supply and the solenoid valve causing it to energize. By default, the Y2 terminal acts as a normally open contact with the COM terminal. When it is activated, it closes the circuit, allowing current to flow and switching the solenoid valve on. This is how we successfully connect and operate a 24 DC volt solenoid valve using a PLC output. In the next section, we'll look at how to connect a 230 AC volt contactor to the PLC. In this configuration also, we need to determine a few key factors. Signal type, digital or analog. Since we only need to turn the contactor on and off, we use a digital output. For this connection, we'll use a different output group. Let's pick COM3. 
This is because our contactor operates at 230 AC volt, which requires a separate power source compared to our previous 24 DC volt solenoid valve connection. Here's how we wire it. The live wire from the 230 AC volt power supply is connected to the COM3 terminal of the PLC output module. The live wire from the contactor is connected to the Y7 output terminal of the PLC. The neutral wire from the contactor is connected to the neutral line of the single phase power supply. This setup follows the same switching process as before, but with a different voltage. When the program activates Y7, it closes the circuit, allowing current to flow and energizing the 230 AC volt contactor. In COM2, we used 24 DC volt for the solenoid valve. In COM3, we're using 230 AC volt for the contactor. Since relay outputs are electrically isolated, multiple COM terminals allow us to connect different voltage sources to different outputs safely. Now you can understand why output module has so many COM terminals. As you've seen, connecting input and output devices to a PLC is essentially about completing a circuit, either with a power supply or within the PLC itself. That's why proper wiring is crucial to ensure all COM terminals are correctly connected to the devices and power source. In this video, I explained PLC wiring using Shinji PLCs as an example. However, most PLCs work in a similar way, with differences mainly in model, number of inputs and outputs, and whether the outputs are digital or analog. The core wiring concepts remain the same, so understanding this fundamental approach will help you work with any PLC brand. Remember, whenever you work with a new PLC, Always refer to its user manual to understand its specific wiring requirements. We also covered important considerations, such as sensor signal types and output device types, which apply to any PLC, regardless of the brand. Keeping these basics in mind will help you wire and configure PLCs correctly in any industrial automation setup. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, Subscribe for more automation videos, and drop a comment if you have any questions. Stay tuned for more PLC tutorials.